Elsewhere, Elmar shocks Chantal with his abilities by manipulating the electricity in their household, claiming they are being visited by the ghost of his dead birth mother. The movie begins many years ago when an extraordinary event occurred in a local school that caused several injuries and a casualty. Amid the response of emergency services at the scene, psychiatrist Dr. Stern arrives to search the area, visibly shocked to see a table thrown out of the administrator's room and a giant gaping hole on the side of the building. She enters the gymnasium and comforts a frightened little girl hiding in a corridor, seemingly the culprit of the incident, telling her everything will be alright. In the present day, the little girl, Wendy, is married with one child and drinks regular maintenance of blue pills. She works as a fry cook at Chop Heaven, a fast food restaurant, while her husband, Lars, is a security guard. Before leaving for work, Wendy tells him she will attempt to ask for a promotion, hoping the salary raise will be enough to remedy their increasing debt. After a tiring shift, she confronts her stern boss, Angela, who allows her to prove herself by assuming overtime responsibilities like arranging the beer kegs and taking out the trash. Later, she encounters a homeless man, Marek, who secretly gives him something to eat out of compassion. Grateful, he thanks her while strangely telling her, you're one of us. He later follows her as she walks home alone, claiming that the pills she was prescribed to take for 20 years have been suppressing a dormant superhuman ability that he has also acquired. To make her believe, he falls off the bridge and gets run over by a truck, freaking her out enough to call for help and hurry home. Confused and terrified, she consults Dr. Stern about the strange occurrence, dismissing it as a dream. Feeling concerned, the doctor increases the pill's dosage before she gets dismissed from the therapy session. Before leaving for work the following day, she becomes troubled upon reading the eviction notice and the collector's enforcement letter. During her shift, she takes out the trash when Mark appears looking unharmed after his accident. He tries to explain his superpower, only to be shooed away by Angela. Later at night, she is surprised to see her son, Carl waiting for her by a dumpster while a group of bullies playing soccer steal his shoes. Though tempted to call off their behavior, she shrugs off their insults and takes Carl home. By morning, she follows Mark's advice and flushes her pills down the toilet. While preparing burger patties in the kitchen, she accidentally bends the tray with incredible force, hiding it from Angela in the storage room. Walking home in the evening after work, she passes by the men catcalling her and confronts them. One of the thugs pins her down, preparing to assault her until she flings his two friends from across the lot with super strength, making him flee for his life. She returns to her family and pretends everything is normal. The next day at Chop Heaven, a worried Dr. Stern orders food while reminding Wendy to consult her for another therapy session since she missed a previous appointment. Elsewhere, her co-worker Elmar eats breakfast while reading a comic book. His father, Gerhardt, protests, believing he does not feel determined to finish a university degree instead of working for minimum wage. Later, Angela confronts Wendy about the bent tray. Still, the waitress gets angry and lifts her up high, threatening to throw her in the grinder. As her powers become more evident, she goes to Neptune's world, an abandoned amusement park based on the pamphlet Marek gave her. Upon sneaking inside the main facility, she enters a dimly lit room. She sees secretly taken photos of her attached on a map, believing she has been spied upon for some time. Marek appears and explains she has been looking for her since she is one of many superpowered individuals being barred from showing their unique abilities by higher powers in the government, including Dr. Stern. She leaves dismissive of claims and continues living her life the following day as she plays with her son, feeling lonely without friends. However, she kicks the ball too hard while playing soccer, sending it flying off into the distance. Realizing she needs more answers, Wendy infiltrates Dr. Stern's office, jumping high and crashing onto the window to enter the room. While sifting through sensitive documents, she finds a dossier of Elmar, surmising that he has also prescribed the blue pills. She goes to his house to warn him before quickly disappearing when his dad enters his bedroom. The following day, she decides to embrace her abilities, crushing all the bicycles of the bullies and pushing the parked car blocking the restaurant's entrance. Later, she confronts a terrified Angela to request a promotion, promising to keep progressing in her duties. Upon leaving the restaurant, Elmar appears, holding a light bulb to show he can control electricity, calling himself Electro Man. After buying beers, Wendy demonstrates her super strength by destroying the ATM kiosk and stealing the cash inside. Sitting atop a billboard advertising the blue pill, the pair discuss what they will do with their powers, hoping they can change things in their neighborhood. Clearly smitten with each other, they lean in for a kiss but hesitate midway. Later, they dance the night away at a club when some brutes appear and harass other women partying. Angered by this sight, she lures them into the bathroom and beats them up, with Elmar electrocuting one of the men who attempt to lunge at her. 
she returns home around dawn to see her husband sleeping on the couch while waiting for her arrival. As he awakens, she presents him with a bag filled with money, explaining that she has been working long hours to earn more. She then has sex with him to ease his suspicions. Elsewhere, Elmar wears a store-bought costume to assume his newfound heroic persona, only for his father's girlfriend, Chantal, to scoff at him for looking ridiculous. Meanwhile, Wendy fills their backyard pool with water, delighting the entire family to dip and swim. Simultaneously, the beaten partygoer at the club reports the unusual incident to the police, claiming the woman they encountered has super strength. The interrogators leave the room to let Dr. Stern continue with more inquiries. Later in the evening, Wendy takes Elmar to meet Marek and prove his abilities by powering up the amusement park with his fingertips. The group discusses their next move to sneak inside a prison housing superhuman individuals. Marek reveals he was once incarcerated there and that it has masked itself as a psychiatric hospital for years. With the plan to free the inmates set, Wendy leaves her home the next night, excusing herself from Lars' impromptu movie date proposal. On the drive to the facility, Elmar excitedly shows off his costume imprinted with a lightning bolt and presents the group with their own cheap superhero outfits, much to their hesitation. Upon arriving, Wendy, wearing a red wig, entices the front desk guard to escort her to the bathroom, allowing her to incapacitate him. At the same time, Elmar disables the camera system by shocking the control panel. As they quietly walk along the hallway, Elmar pauses to use the vending machine when a guard appears, prompting Wendy to throw the copier at him. Suddenly, the alarm is triggered, forcing the group to leave the facility, only to get surrounded by security personnel. Since it is raining, Elmar uses his powers to electrocute them. As they flee from the area, Wendy and Marek angrily castigate him for recklessly endangering innocent lives. Still, Elmar insists they must rise up as superheroes and let their presence be known. Marek confesses he tried to live an everyday life with a wife and daughter, only to get them killed by the agents of the Atlas Corporation hunting him. Before leaving, he warns the pair not to make the same mistake he made. Later, Wendy arrives home to an inebriated Lars, who calls her out for lying about going to her night shift. Though he accuses her of having extramarital affairs, she hesitates to tell him the truth as he demands to be left alone to sulk. The following day, Wendy is meditating underwater when Carl appears and asks her if she is getting a divorce. She vaguely tells him about passing through specific changes while comforting him. Elsewhere, Elmar shocks Chantal with his abilities by manipulating the electricity in their household, claiming they are being visited by the ghost of his dead birth mother. Later, while having breakfast, Wendy struggles to come clean about her superhuman nature but confesses to Lars that she has felt something for Elmar. Despite this revelation, she promises to stay invested in their family life. Meanwhile, Elmar visits Dr. Stern about his condition while also reporting about talking to Marek, preparing to expose his hideout at Neptune's world. The following morning, Wendy and Lars throw a pool party for Carl and invite his schoolmates. Unbeknownst to the waitress, Marek is captured by Dr. Stern and Atlas agents. Later, Elmar appears at the party and tells Wendy about Marek's capture, hoping she can join him as the Valkyrie and become a superhero duo. However, she rejects him, fully aware that his intentions for her have become increasingly romantic. As he leaves forlorn, he manipulates the street light to cause two bikers to crash into traffic. Later, Wendy argues with Lars as he reveals he has been talking to Dr. Stern behind her back for some time. Before he walks away to contact the doctor, she thrashes him across the room as Carl walks inside and becomes afraid. Feeling guilty, she cries as she hurriedly flees from her house. Upon reaching Elmar's luxury home, she becomes horrified when he witnesses him electrocute his father into cardiac arrest while they embrace. He tries to coerce Wendy into joining his fanatical desire, only to incapacitate her when she refuses. Sometime later, she awakens restrained inside a room in the Atlas facility. Dr. Stern tries to calm her down by reminding her that past actions showcasing her super strength led to the death of her school principal, much to her mother's horror. Realizing she cannot control her powers, Wendy submits to restarting her treatment, accepting that she is a freak. As days pass, she resumes taking the blue pills while incarcerated in an isolated room. Marek is also with her in the facility but refuses to socialize. One night, Elmar visits to gift her an identical CD player she used to own in childhood. He promises to free her from her responsibilities by eliminating her family, much to her worry. He then cuts off the power from the whole town, allowing Wendy and the inmates to leave their rooms while he visits her home. Angered by his presence, Lars punches him, but Elmar proposes to shake his hand to signify a truce, not knowing he will shock him. Meanwhile, Wendy escapes through the doors when Dr. Stern and her guards block the path. Marek incapacitates them but gets accidentally shot by the doctor, forcing Wendy to punch her. Before dying, he asks her to lead the inmates to freedom.
Wendy rushes home to see Elmar keeping Carl hostage while Lars is tied up in the bathroom. As she continually refuses to join him, she flings her across the room, angering Carl, who throws his toy at him. Lars throws her a pair of rubber gloves she uses to clobber him to the pool, electrocuting him with his own powers. Knowing that people will come for her, she flees while Lars and Carl surrender a disfigured Elmar to a more sympathetic Dr. Stern and Atlas agents. After some time, Wendy leaves Carl with her CD player to help him cope with his loneliness. The movie ends as she returns to her new hideout with a renewed sense of purpose to examine the evidence board, hoping to track down more superhuman freaks with the help of a few other escapees from the Atlas facility. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this to help the channel out. Have a nice day.